Hey, all right, mate. All right. How yeah, you Robin? doing? All yeah, right. Really nice good, to thanks. see you, Todd. Yeah, cheers. Todd's my local Hilti account manager, and he's kindly brought me over to try your big breaker, haven't you? The big TE2000. I mean, I wish I was there. You're going to have so much fun. <laughs> well, the thing <laughs> is, right, we've got this, oil, we had an oil tank on the big build, and we got rid of the oil tank, and it's on a concrete base. It doesn't look very big, this concrete base. It yeah. looks like a shed base. And we got our smaller breaker out, and it didn't really touch it, okay? It's, okay. It seems to be quite hard. Yeah. Um, and then we have, we've got a, a slightly bigger older breaker. We plugged it in into the transformer, into the circuit. It just keeps popping fuses. So we couldn't even get it to run for more than 60 seconds before some okay. breaker in the house was going off. Now, our electrician could probably fix that problem or, or run us a better supply, but the big build is in the middle of nowhere. So show me this thing. Right. I, am, I mean, I saw it in Manchester, but I, I can't remember blind me. Look at that. This is it, the, the Hilti TE2000 breaker, battery operated by Neuron. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? And these are the um, the larger format batteries. That's yep, what I need. Yeah, that's right. So I'll make sure they're fully charged. Um, so I'll, I'll literally only need it for a morning tomorrow. Okay. I'll give you a bell as soon as I'm done. Maybe you can fly out and Brilliant. pick it up. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to, as I say, I did try it <laughs> on a solid bit of concrete. That's brilliant. No, welcome your feedback. Yeah, no, that'd be great. Yeah, well, I know it's a, it's a good talk. So thanks so much for dropping it out. Brilliant. I'll stick it in my wagon. Okay. All right, nice okay. one. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. Well, that's it. I'm here. I'm back at the big build. I love coming out here. You know, when you get on a job and you think, oh, it's just so nice. I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere. So partly why I had the issues with the bigger breaker, which was plugged into a transformer, had to be into a lead. And every time we used it, boom, it just cut out. So I have got the luxury of this breaker now. So I've only got it literally for the day. I've got two fully charged batteries, the biggest batteries that come with it. There's three different sizes of batteries with the uh, 22 volt neuron system. Obviously a smaller one you'd put into a drill, for example, and then I've got the big one. Now all of the, all of the batteries will go in all of the devices. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get on. I'll show you how big this base is and we'll get it broken out. First job is get the machine out of the van. So it's actually not that heavy, even on the um, even on the stand. It's pretty good, even for someone like me. So there's the machine. Got the batteries. So we'll take them round as well. And what else do we need? We need some PPE, of course. So I've got my ear defenders. I've got some gloves and some eye protection, and that's me. So I've got goggles my ears, my hands, and let's go for it. And believe it or not, that is all we need. So this is the base, it's just a typical concrete base. As I said, we had the oil tank on here from before we fitted the heat pump here at the big build. And it's roughly about 200 mil thick, the normal sort of thing at this end. And I'd imagine it's probably the same down the other end. I have no idea whether there's any mesh in it, any reinforcement in it. All I do know is that it is super hard because this is where we tried the other breaker. As I say, we plugged it in, pulled the trigger, it went, boom, boom, bang, basically it just kept popping the breaker. So this is the beauty of having a battery tool. Now I've got two fully charged batteries. These are the biggest of the Neuron batteries. I'm not sure how far I'm gonna get with it. And then I'm gonna charge them up and carry on. So they're gonna take an hour each to charge. I've only got one charger here. So the potential is I'm gonna get so far then I've got to have a two hour break, but I've actually got work to do obviously. So I'm not too worried about that. So here we go. We're gonna get on and make a start on breaking it up. So basically this, this breaker locks into this little um, trolley here, which is really handy. So this, these are the batteries. Oh, let me just try and release one of these batteries for us. It's simple. So there's the battery. Obviously it's telling me that it's got all its life that it needs. I did double check they were fully charged before I left and they just click in really easily. We've got chisel and we've also got a point and then we'll get the machine out 
Here we go. It's a toolless application and we're ready to go. Gloves, goggles and safety boots, obviously. So there's an on-off switch on the side here. As soon as we press that, it's going to want to start going. Let's start over here. This is where we finished last time. So what do I think? Well, I mean, it's a beast. And um, look at this, I always discover strange things during construction. Now this concrete is good concrete, it's rock solid. Just look at the color of that. Cement to sand and stone ratio is pretty high, I would say. And um, they've used some rudimentary reinforcement. They've used restraint straps, which is a bit unusual. I've never seen that before. And actually they don't actually do that much to help it as opposed to a round sort of rebar if you like, the normal sort of bar you'd put in. This is uh, rubbish because it actually creates a straight sort of joint which is weak. Um, so it's, it's actually in my favour. I've actually tried the chisel as well as the point. The chisel's a beast. I mean, with this kind of concrete, I think I need to actually chisel away. You can see here, look, right in the surface of the concrete is another one of these lateral restraint straps, which is bizarre. It's not even, not even deep under the surface. I don't know what they were thinking, but there you go. Anyway, let's crack on, let's get it out. You've got to see this, this is mental, right? So whoever did this, they've used this lateral restraint as sort of like a reinforcement, which doesn't really work at all. And then I'm finding whole bags of cement. So they laid out all these old bags of cement and anyone who knows anything about cement, it's an amazing material. When you mix it with sand and stone, okay? It, it produces concrete, but on its own, it is, it is brittle, it, it, it doesn't do anything, especially in the bag. So they've literally, there's another one here, look. There's one under here, there's one, it's looked like they've laid them all out, and it, in some cases it's helping me, but look at the thickness of the concrete around the edges. You know, it's 10 inches thick. Yeah, up, there's another bag of cement under there, and there's another one here, this is cement here. Yeah, madness, but I'll tell you what, this thing is doing really well. I'm about a uh, third of the way through, and it is particularly hard, but I've still got a bit of life left in the battery, so I'm going to see how far it takes me. Um, and hopefully it gets a bit thinner as we get to the other side. So the batteries have got me exactly halfway and um, I think if this was the sort of normal sort of six to eight inches deep it would have probably got me all the way across so I'm, I'm at least halfway which is pretty good going I'll put the batteries on charge but we've just got this solid lumps of cement whole bags of cement which have been dropped in we've got pipes any old any old rubbish that's been used as some sort of rudimentary 
reinforcement. There's a bit of iron pipe there, which it goes through. And of course that slows things up. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna get those batteries on charge, have a bit of lunch, do a couple of other little jobs and get it finished. Right, batteries are charged. So let's slot these back in. Pop them in and we are ready to go. which is just solid bags of cement and also there's a some sort of frame which is in here which actually has done a pretty good job of binding everything together as have a lots of bags ever seen so much rubbish in one well one concrete slab So that's it, I'm done. And that was like a bit of a back breaker to be fair. I'm just glad I had a proper, proper road breaker. You'd look at that slab and you'd think that would be a piece of cake, you know? But you see how it was made? We had gates, so we had all sorts of metal work. We had pumps, we had lateral restraint straps, everything you can imagine. We had bags, full bags of cement just slung in it. So yeah, it was, um, it was horrible, but at least this thing, did the job and as i say i had a bit of a schoolboy area if i'd have bought a couple of those slightly smaller batteries i could have been using those while those were charging but there you go i had other things to do completed the work but if i knock off the time it took to change the batteries or to charge the batteries then i could have been gone a good couple of hours ago at least so um, there you go anyway it's done and dusted and my verdict on that is um it's good it's an it's an expensive bit of kit but if you use Hilti on their uh, fleet management is called, is where you basically, it's a bit like buying a van. You don't go and spend 45 grand on a van. You basically buy it by the month, which is good for cash flow. So, so something like that would cost you, I don't think it's about 120 quid a month, but on a 48 uh, month contract, but don't hold me to that. It's that sort of order anyway. And the idea is that, you know, you get your servicing and everything else with it. If anything goes wrong, you know, they probably know before you know, because it will send up messages via the app to their uh, headquarters and they'll say, it's not performing right. We need to send you a new battery. So I think that this is a different a league. It's a different league as far as power tools are concerned in, in the sense that what you're getting with Hilti is this whole 
kind of like business support as well. So that's why a lot of serious construction firms use Hilti. You see it all over the place, all over the tube, where you see the contractors all over airports. I always see people using Hilti. I think it's because they've got that nationwide backup. They've got guys driving around, guys and girls driving around in vans with all the gear. They can replace the tool the next day. They can send it off for repair. So I think that's a really good thing if you're a professional construction operation and time where you've got to go in and do a job and get out again. You need the backup, I suppose. And that's where you're, what you're paying for effectively. But that is great fun. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you again soon.